Well, that was a fiddle. Huh. I didn't film the whole thing to get it to this point because it ended up being much more of a fiddle than I had anticipated. Welcome and thank you so much for being here. I appreciate your company. In this video, I'm changing the setup for my Dendrobium Anosmum, which so far is the only fail I have had on my inorganic mounts. So what I'm trying to do here, well, what I've succeeded in doing here was, I don't want my Dendrobium Anosmum to be flopping around. I'll show it to you right now and then you'll understand why I went to the trouble to try and figure out how to get my support into the pot super sturdy so that I can tie the anosmum to it because the lecker that I'm going to be putting into the base is small lecker. We'll discuss the reasons behind that but I couldn't in any other way support my anosmum unless the support in here was going to be solid. So I took a thicker gauge wire thinking it's going to do the job so much better and what a fiddle it didn't work and I wanted to work with the holes that I had available to me instead of adding more holes then I got a thinner gauge wire it was still a fiddle I didn't have the evolution go fast enough for a third hand to help me out with this one a thinner gauge wire did it two little loops and my support in here is pretty sturdy that's good enough for what we're about to do next and here is my Dendrobium Anosmum. Now, when I say that it wasn't a successful setup for this orchid, I am only referring to the potential this orchid has in growing long, strong canes. And since I have had it, this orchid hasn't been performing very well for me. So I took it off a conventional mount and put it onto this mount, which is an actual fact, a kitchen scrubby pad, and had it here for about two years now. The cane that it grew last year clearly is way below average size. I mean, it's ridiculous. This orchid should have long, lush canes, and the only way to push that is to provide a lot, a lot of water. Now, in my very low humidity climate, I thought these scrubby pads would hold on to plenty of humidity, allowing the roots to grow, seeing as it's such a fine mesh. Some roots even managed to go through it, so I was testing the density of it as well. And all that pretty much worked out okay, but it's not good enough. Now, it is growing new roots again on this one growth, and let's just consider this a seedling from here on in, and that is the treatment it's going to get if I can get it off the mount. Well, let's not say if, I am going to get it off the mount. The amount of damage I'm going to do to possibly viable existing roots, that is a different story, but once again, I have new roots growing on the newest cane and whatever happens after that and stays viable, it, it's a bonus. I'm not going to ruin my first new root there by just yanking away at the fishing line. But I'm not going to be too careful about possible existing viable roots which are back here. I will leave, however any of the scrubby pad that goes around the roots on. I'm not going to cut it all off, but um, the majority of everything else is going to come off C or C. And you see, because I have no real roots for anchoring, that also means that I don't have any stability in this pot for this orchid, which is not a good thing when it comes time for new roots to grow the orchid should not be moving around at all. And that is why I needed that support to be super solid and steady in the pot. I have to calculate the wind that I get here on my patio, take all of that into consideration to make sure that this orchid stays stable because the next set of roots are the future. What I'm doing now is cutting off the scrubby pad off of the grid on the back to see if I can just lift the orchid with the scrubby pad off because after that all we're going to do is a chop chop around the root system scrubby pad included so who's holding me back here a root that has grown in and out this one right here well not for long there we go Phase one. Now, how many viable roots do we think we have? All of them. 
including or not including this one. Huh. Yeah, they're viable. They're waking up just in conjunction with what the orchid is doing. So I'm going to have to slice out a circle. Let's see which margin we're going to take as our guide. This side? No, we'll take this side. It looks much more feasible coming in from this side. Now I have something happening in here that's just salt and mineral buildup. No, that was a root, so we're going to be a little bit more diligent. And there's a root up there. Let's see if we just take this piece off right here. Let's get the bulk away from the bottom and make the handling a little bit easier. Where is that root? Right there. Not sure I should be using my snips for this, but oh well, here we are. Try not to cut the cane. <laughs> Let's see that we can cut something off here. Because at the end of the day, I just need as much of the scrubby pad to stay on as will fit into the pot. Okay, we've gone through some roots over there. There's one holding on there, not for long. Hmm, could have been viable, could have woken up. Could have, would have, should have. And let's go along this line right here. Okay, where are we at? Unconventional mount, unconventional removal of a mount. <laughs> but let's see, can we get rid of any more? Let's watch out for that root right there. Let's see what the bracket of the pot now says. Yeah, we need to get more off. And we're going to be, now we're going to be a little bit more radical. Never mind where the roots are, because I am going with the new root system. Make it a little bit of a dinner plate kind of thing. That would work except for that one little corner there. Sorry for that jiggle, I just had a puppy lie down and move the tripod, I apologize for that. Ideally I want it more in the middle. So we're going to still be even more radical and cut a slice like a wedge into this part right here for the mount. The mount, sorry, for the support. There we go. That'll work for me just fine. Right. Now, I only brought out so much lecker to fill half the pot because I was going under the principle of I'm going to suspend my roots at let them grow in and then fill around. Seeing this though, with the scrubby pad still on it, I have plenty of humidity. So, we're going to just shake out any debris out of this pot and I'm going to get more lecker to then fill up the pot with lecker. This is awesome. I'll be right back. Okie dokie, the rest should be pretty straightforward.
There we go. No need to fill with water, clearly. I've got no roots in a pot to be mindful of. And I was really thinking I'm going to need to tie this orchid. I may still need to do that, but we'll see what the lecker does to weigh down and secure the orchid in place once it's right on the top of the scrubby pad. I may not need to actually secure her with another wire. But that would be cutting corners. I would keep freaking out about her blowing out of the pot. It has been so breezy. And that's putting it mildly. Breezy is not even the right word. Been super, super windy. It's horrible. At least it's warm. I suppose I shouldn't be complaining. Champagne problems? I take it back. I do want a lecker bead away from that root though. So far, we're going to free the base of Lekka in case I miss the mark. And something starts to dry off right where the roots are starting to grow. I don't want that. Lots of humidity, yes, but definitely no desiccating of root tips. This is now fundamental. Let's just say, as I am now treating this orchid like a seedling, I thought I got a mature orchid when she arrived. We're just going to go back and pretend that this orchid is a seedling Never mind her dodgy, dubious history. Never mind my assumptions. As a seedling, she's going to need a lot more water. And she can still live outside, which is good because I don't like taking orchids of mounts that I have designated for outdoor living 365 days a year and then suddenly have to pot them up and bring them inside because my indoor winter configuration, it's a tight squeeze. And I don't need that. So she can still live outside, but we will treat her watering and fertilizing wise like a seedling. So this morning she got the fertilizer as I was leading up to this, let's say, not repot, but change of setup. So I sprayed her heavily with fertilizer 160 parts per million. And now we're going to fill up the pot only with seaweed. And I mean fill up the pot all the way up to the scrubby pad. And this amount here is about 50 parts per million because I was a little heavy handed when I poured into the bucket. So we've got 50 in this whole pot right now. And she's going to be like this until tomorrow. Let everything saturate and let everything soak in nicely. The root tip is touching the seaweed solution and that should be about it with the exception of one thing. So excited to get this orchid in a pot and hopefully do it justice. Now if this orchid does not perform in the next two or three years, that's the margin I'm giving it, then the orchid itself is not healthy. The scrubby pad thing I wish would have worked a hundred percent my climate is far too dry, so self-watering is going to have to do the trick again. If not, two or three years is what I'm giving this orchid to make a difference. And now we wait. Anyway, a <laughs> little bit different. Maybe there are different opinions out there about this, but if you knew that today I had 15% humidity on a cloudy day at the end of June, I can tell you it's only going to get worse throughout July and August while this orchid is supposed to grow. I cannot keep up with the needs of this orchid on a mount. That is why maybe this season my aim is only just to double the length of the previous cane, which was this. If I get double this length, I'll be happy about it. If it's still stalling, well, orchids grow slowly. I'm giving it two to three years. Hope you're here to watch the journey about the Dendrobium anosmum in my collection. In the meantime, though, I want to say thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a beautiful day. That one condition, though, stands. Please stay safe. Take care. Bye.